be now put. Uh, Moana Mackey. Thank you very much, Mr Chair, and I'm very pleased to take a call on the commencement uh, clause of this piece of legislation. The, the reason being that sometimes the commencement clause might be seen as a clause that's not particularly important, but when we're talking about the scale of change that we're talking about in this piece of legislation, it in fact becomes uh, critical. Because there is only one reason why a commencement clause uh, at the beginning of next year would be forced through, and that is so that the massive changes that are going to occur in our tertiary institutions and our student associations cannot be undone by future governments. Uh, and we sincerely hope that at the election this year um, that this commencement clause won't matter because we will be in a position to revisit uh, this issue. Um, and I'm very grateful that our election is before 1 January 2012 so that we may have the opportunity uh, to do that. Because I don't think we should underestimate the scale of change that is happening here in the very short time period that this commencement clause allows for. And it's in light of that that I, I congratulate my colleague Grant Robertson for his amendments to move the commencement uh, date out to allow for student associations to prepare for the scale of change that is coming. And not just, not just uh, in so much as preparing the students for what it's going to mean for them, but to give them the, the, the time to organise alternative methods of funding if that's what they have to do, if they're going to need to go out uh, and look for philanthropic donations to keep running some of these, uh, these services that students have come to expect and have come to value, uh, then a commencement date of 1 January 2012 simply doesn't allow for that. Simply doesn't allow for that. And I, I believe that that's entirely deliberate. Because if we had a commencement date that actually provided enough time for the student associations to to preserve, and, and I, I completely um, endorse what my colleague Ian Lees Galloway has said, that it's too late for our politics. Too late for our politics. I mean, they're, they're, they're not going to be able to survive in terms of the, those student associations and the services. But for universities uh, that have provided much larger scale um, uh, services, that have more students, etc., etc., a, a commencement date that allowed more time for them to preserve those services uh, would seem to be fair and reasonable if, in fact, what you wanted was the preservation of those services. Now, if what you actually wanted was for those services to fall over so that future governments or future pieces of legislation uh, could not reinstate them because, you know, they've gone and we can't get them back, then a commencement date that's very short, such as the ones found in this legislation, um, would be the path that you would go down. And I've asked the Minister and the Chair why she won't allow student associations longer time uh, to prepare for this change, longer time to try and save uh, some of the services, why she won't agree to a commencement date of even a year out, as my uh, year further out, uh, as my colleague Grant Robertson has proposed, uh, to make sure that, that, that if this legislation is going to go through, that these services aren't lost because of such a short period of time to adapt, a commencement date that is, is, is at the very beginning of the next year, um, which means that they, they don't have time to be able to, to attempt to find alternative sources of funding for these services, uh, to, to set up different arrangements, uh, or um, to have democratic processes on campuses where they could say, well, the government has said that we're not going to do this. How about we try and set up some other kind of student cooperative or student um, funding mechanism in order to be able to have these services survive. And I say to the Minister and the Chair that if, if she genuinely wants these services to survive, this really is apparently just some kind of great, you know, philosophical, the, you know, this is the biggest problem facing New Zealand that needs to be solved, is that, is, is that we have compulsory student membership despite the fact that, of course, you can opt out of that if you want to, uh, then why won't you just give a commencement date in this legislation that allows for the student associations to adapt, to preserve those services, to find alternative sources of funding. I, I don't believe that that's an unreasonable request unless your primary goal is to have those services fall over so that they can never come under the ambit of compulsory uh, student membership uh, again, Mr. Mr Chair. And, you know, it, 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 
I don't think it, it's no surprise that members on this side of the House feel very strongly about this issue, feel very strongly about the preservation of these services. But, Mr Chair, Chair. Honourable David Carter. Mr Chairman, I move.